Hey y'all, welcome back. Jason Michelle here, Echo Nesters. Thanks for joining us. We're with Bad Betty today. And you might be wondering what I'm holding here in my hand. This is a shower curb dam right here. It's flexible, it's pliable, and it's made to actually go on existing shower curbs and give it just a little bit more, let's call it, profile to where the water is not going to deflect and splash over. Now, you might be asking yourself if you don't have a Winnebago Echo and you're considering one, or any class B or C, why would this be important? Why would somebody want to do this? They've actually been designed, the manufacturer has a pan in place here for a shower. Well, we're gonna tell you why we think a little bit different about that. So Bad Betty, as you can see, she has this great bathroom. She's got her sink, hot and cold water, nice working cassette toilet, a mirror, a window, a medicine cabinet, everything's great. You swing her around here and she's got this great hidden shower. You come on in, you've got this adjustable shower head, it's removable, it's got lots of pressure. We do have a shower curtain, okay? So you're thinking to yourself, maybe, this thing has an acrylic shower pan, everything looks normal. Well, let's talk a little bit about what we can improve and why we sort of disagree and think that something could be improved. I'm gonna have Michelle swing around here real quick. As you notice when you stepped into the shower here, we have about a one inch curb here. It's got a radius so everything can drain. Now, the idea is not that we think that water is going to build up in the shower pan, and that's assuming on an Echo Dater gulper pump, which you hear right now, and that thing just cued right in, <laughs> is working, and that's because we turned on the faucet. So we'll let it kind of do its thing. There we go. With the gulper pumps working, or let's say you have a gravity fed drain, if something was clogged up or not working, you'd build up that water. But that's not our concern. I'm going to take you down here. Yes, we have a shower curtain. These shower curtains are not designed to flop and be loose and sloppy on the floor. That would create other problems. The thing is, is that they just go slightly past the curb, but the curb's only about an inch high. Now, as you're showering and that water's coming against you, I'm going to have Michelle step back out again. Let's say that I'm in here and we're going to assume the shower curtain is closed. And I'm showering. Some folks are going to say, well, you don't have to have the water facing right here. Don't worry about that. Well, sometimes you do need to take care of things in a certain way. And it may not be to your advantage to do this because the water's still going to deflect off your shoulder and going to want to roll out. So we can argue all day long about how we're going to stand there, remove it, shower and everything else. But we do these things and we have this for the conveniences they offer and we don't want to fight water coming outside. So what we decided to install here is this. Now, if you purchase one of these and you decide I'm going to go with it and we're going to give it a shot, the thing to keep in mind is pre-installation, this should be acclimated at about 70 plus degrees. It needs to be warm, it needs to be pliable, and especially where the adhesive is right here. If this is cold during the install, and our acrylic shower curb is cold during the install, this adhesive right here is probably not gonna stand a chance of making a good connection. So what we're gonna do here is swing you back around and show you some of the basic tools that we need to get started. You'll see here that I just have a real sharp blade and knife. You can use an X-Acto knife. You can probably use a pair of scissors. I pre-tested cutting one of these with a pair of scissors and I wasn't really happy with the cut. It wasn't super straight. The other thing you're going to want is just some mild cleaner. You can also use denatured alcohol, and that's to prep the surface of the acrylic curve here, this right here. This needs to be free of soap scum, any extra silicone that was built up from the factory, and anything else that might be on here. Now, another thing you can do to pre-treat this is you can scuff this with maybe 150, 180, 220 sandpaper just to give it a little bit um, better surface to bite on. The other thing that you'll see here is we have some quick seal. No particular brand. We're not sponsored by anything. This just happens to be something that I use in the construction field. It's an adhesive caulk. And as you can see, it's made for kitchens, baths, and plumbing. I chose to get white just because this is white. They come in clear. They come in other colors. It just seemed that would be appropriate. What I'll be doing with this is not only putting a little bead down before we install this, and I'll demonstrate where, but caulking the edge after we're finished. The other thing that you'll notice is that we have a pen that's just to mark our length. 
I'm gonna tell you and show you why I choose to make the mark in there rather than take a tape measure and measure it out. And lastly, no, I'm not doing my hair, as you can see. Um, so just kidding, but uh, we have a blow dryer. So as you're sitting out in your coach, your driveway, wherever you're at, let's just say you're in a region of the country where the temperature, you're kind of fighting it and you don't wanna crank up the heat the whole time. You can preheat, or I'd say warm, your curve here, because we don't want this cold again. And you can keep this warm and pliable before installation and heat, let's call it the adhesive tape side, but just a simple blow dryer. I would not use a heat gun. You use a heat gun, you're gonna melt that curb. You're probably gonna cause some damage, you're gonna melt this. So just a simple blow dryer. So let's get started here. I'm gonna get things swung around here and Michelle's gonna rejoin me in just a moment. So, all right, we're back now and we're gonna be installing this product. And like I said, we want this nice and warm. We have a hair dryer just in case we feel like it's got a little bit cold. We've got it so that we can take care of the curb that we were talking about. This piece of tape, we're not going to peel back yet. This is the last thing we're gonna do is expose the adhesiveness of this product here. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna have Michelle drift into the shower and we're gonna demonstrate how we're gonna pre-measure and cut this. There's a couple things you can do. You could obviously take a tape measure and you can measure across and you can work that angle. However, there's another way to do this that's pretty simple. So I'm gonna let Michelle step into the restroom here. Now I'm gonna swing it around. Now you're gonna notice one of the tools that I have is a simple pen. Uh, this is just a ballpoint pen. I probably wouldn't use a Sharpie because you might make a permanent mark on it. I'm going to be, if I'm standing outside of the shower, my left side right here, which we're gonna call where the shower uh, valve assembly is located, is where I'm gonna choose to start. So as I bring this down, one thing to keep in mind that's important is that the curb narrows between here and here. I should say, the curb wall. This is our curb, this is the wall. And if we push too far back, it's gonna kind of get a little bit difficult to get some adhesion in, or I should say the product to adhere. So what I'm gonna choose to do is just kind of come slightly past where the door hinges, where we have, let's call it the aluminum track of the wall. And I'm gonna hold it there, and I'm gonna take my hand and guide this all the way around here holding it in place. Now, we're gonna swing back here. Somebody might say, well, it just moved and it flapped out of the way. Think of it this way. I've placed it where it needs to go. I've taken my other hand and locked it down. And I'm just gonna follow sequence by keeping pressure. So I know this hasn't moved. This moves, but it hasn't moved my measurement. As I get here, I'm gonna go slightly past this wall here. So I'm gonna just make a mark right there. And then what we're going to do is we're going to take it out and prep it to cut. So we'll swing back out here. Now, as we spoke earlier, we've pre-cleaned our surface. We've got it nice and warm. This is still very pliable, very, let's call it uh, flexible, if you will. Now I'm going to locate my mark here. After I've located my mark, I'm just going to use this cutting board. This stuff cuts pretty simple. Again, you can use an X-Acto knife, whatever you're comfortable with. And basically, I'm going to score straight down my pen line. Now, some folks may take a straight edge and draw a perfect line down here. I feel pretty comfortable making a straight cut. I'm going to start at the top, and I'm just going to begin to make just a nice, simple incision. And as or I should say cut, I'm cutting down. You can see that that cut is very clean. It's that simple. Set the extra piece aside, get our knife guard reinstalled. Now, I have the product here. I'm just gonna pre-check here just to make sure. Yep, looks like my measurement's good. And one of the things I'm gonna be doing is centering this on my actual curb wall, okay? And remember, this is what we're gonna refer to as our curb wall and I'm gonna be centering it here. Now, what I'm gonna also do, just to kind of demonstrate, is fire up the old blow dryer real quick, and I'm gonna warm my curb up. Probably should have had that a little bit untwisted, but we're okay. And we'll let Bad Benny give us a little power here. Again, I'm, as you can see, I'm just warming it. Remember, we've pre-cleaned it. Um, it's all prepped and ready. Okay. 
Now, I'm gonna come to the second part here. This to me is the more important piece that needs to be still not only flexible, but warm. So I'm gonna leave the tape guard on. I'm just gonna come across here a little bit. Just kind of activating, if you will, what we're trying to do is activate the glue. And I can tell that's actually getting good because this is getting even more pliable. So I have Michelle swing around and we're going to get ready to install this. Now, we talked a little bit earlier about the silicone here and what we're going to use. So I'm going to open it up. I'm just going to make a very small cut in the tip right there. Okay. You don't have to puncture this. Once you've made the cut, they're good. It's not like regular caulking gun. So... We're gonna come down here, and remember, the whole idea is to center this on the curb, okay? So my caulking's ready. This is nice and warm. I'm gonna go ahead and start peeling this back. I'm choosing to remove the entire strip here. Can you see this at all, Michelle? Does it kind of yeah. give you an idea? Mm -hmm. Now this gives us a little room for air on our first contact, which is nice. But as you can see, I'm just following along the center of our curve. It's actually already starting to pipe really well here. And that's down there. Now, I've kind of gone along and pressed it really well. And, oh my goodness, that is on there. So, I'll step back out here, let Michelle step back out. That's gonna take about 24 hours would be my recommendation to let that dry before you make use of your shower. The thing that I want to show you is with the little piece here. Let's say that I'm barefoot. I've got my sock on, but you don't want to see my toes. And this is my curve. Whoops, I'm going to try to hold it. This thing just squishes right down. Very nice and easy. Does not hurt my foot. I can even press down with my toes. So as you can see, this is designed to be soft on your foot. The curve height does change here. You go from about four inches to just over five inches. Keep that in mind that if you have any mobility issues and this is already a problem this may not be the best solution for you however if you choose to say hey at the end this wasn't a very good idea i really don't like it you can remove this use a little adhesive remover it's all done so it's not there for the rest of your life so to speak now let's step back in here and talk about the games that we have on our shower curtain as you can see, our shower curtain now is, I mean, we don't even have to worry about where that's making contact. Everything's good. It's, I, I, I'm pretty happy with that. Step one back out if you can, Shell. I wanna show you something else. I'm pretty sure some of you that were paying attention in the beginning, and I appreciate that, would say, hey, what about this? We don't want water collecting in there. I mean, that's just a place for water or debris to get collected. So. After this is set, and I'm just going to use this as a demonstration, what I'm going to be doing, and I could have done this beforehand, but I felt like I want to kind of just do it afterwards. I'm going to run a nice clean bead of the silicone caulking right here over these openings. And as you can see, it's pretty simple. I'm just going to squeeze some more in there on the lower part. And I'm just going to go ahead and make a nice clean seal there a little bit more right there and there you go voila once that dries that is now sealed and waterproof so that's a good concern if you had it in the beginning something i thought about as well they do sell versions of this with caps but again as that curb wall narrows around the shower i found that the end caps being that they're more of a hard plastic kind of became, I'd say, a little bit intrusive and interrupted the adhesive part of where my edge needed to be. So this was my my choice. Um, you may feel different about buying one that actually has an end cap. By the way, um, initially, this is water soluble. However, if you leave it there much longer, you're not gonna get it off. But there you are. Just make sure that you put your cap back on. 
So what we'll move to next here in a few moments is just demonstrating caulking. Now, the reason that I really like using one of these versus a tube that comes in a caulking gun is, imagine that you're at home and you've just reset a toilet or a sink and you've got to get in those tight areas and you've got the caulking gun, you've got the wall, you've got a lot of obstacles you've got to contend with. With these little guys, you hand squeeze them. They're very easy. Let's pretend we're caulking this sink here. Very easy to manipulate. I can come into these tight corners here, follow along, and just clean up everything really nice. So again, that's why we choose to use this product. And as you can see, tool's pretty simple. Exacto knife or equivalent. You probably don't need your glasses, but in case. Simple ballpoint pen. Cleaner and or denatured alcohol. You can also choose to scuff this area up with a little sandpaper. We chose not to do that. I knew it was gonna make a good bite on here. I kind of pre-tested it. And as you can see, this thing is already adhering and doing its, its job. So pretty excited about this. I hope you guys are too. Uh, we'll leave a link to where you can find one on Amazon. We don't have any sort of commission base off that. So as you're searching, whether you pick this brand or some other brand, just get with what you're comfortable with. But we'll leave you a link to this. Simple dap, quick seal. You can pick that up any hardware store, big box store. Exacto knife or knife and cleaner of your choice. I hope you enjoyed it. Don't forget the blow dryer. Remember, creates good adhesion. This needs to be nice and flexible before install. Any questions, hit us up, comments. If you enjoyed this video, you're looking for more, please do subscribe. We have a lot of cool stuff ahead of us. Each week, we're gonna make an effort to post a tip a product or something that's easy and manageable for you to improve, let's call it your RV life, uh, maybe just your, your moments where you're going out there traveling, you're having some fun and how to maintain your coach, but make it simple and fun. Take care, thanks for joining us. Echo Nestor, Jason Michelle, wishing you safe travels. So hey, we're back and we're ready to caulk this. Um, I need my glasses, by the way. And as you can see, we already made our nice little cut we showed you in the first part of our video. We only cut about Oh, sorry about that, this much off. You don't need much more than that. And again, this is gonna be very simple for you. So I'm gonna have show, get the camera down here and we'll just start with the outside. I already started applying a nice simple bead right here just a few moments ago, but let's just go ahead and we're gonna create a little bit of a pressure. We're squeezing and we're following along here. Now, you might be asking yourself, oh, I don't know if I could do that, that just looks to. I've used caulking guns, I'm not very good at it, etc. This little guy here is going to make your life simple. Now, you just take your finger and you just graze it along. You're just kind of following the inside bead. Now, when you get down to this area, it's going to be a little bit tighter. So, you just kind of switch over. I probably wouldn't worry about the little buildup there, but if you are, you can take a little toothpick, you can take a Q-tip, you can clean that edge up. I'm personally gonna leave it there. I, I just feel like I'm probably gonna add a little bit more in there anyway. I don't like how the manufacturer left that open. So we might as well just do that right now. Let me go ahead and clean this off my hand, make it a little bit simpler and cleaner for us all. There we go. So I'm gonna go ahead and add a nice, generous amount right back in there. And again, I'm just kind of following along here. And what we'll do is, I've got pretty fat fingers, but there we go. And we'll just kind of clean up the edge, just like that. And we have a nice tight seal. So we'll do that to both sides, the inside and outside of the shower curve. And then again, do not forget that what we will be doing at the very end is sealing this opening. Just a little squeeze, a little wipe, and she's done. Thank you again for joining us. Hope that helps. Any questions, comments, again, just hit us up. Looking forward to talking to you in the future. Take care.